Captain's Log, Starlight 192.168.1.21. Me and my science officer here, have, the ZTEC, have been stranded on this Factorkio planet for a very, very long time. And, and Mr. Science Officer ZTEC, I have one question for you, one that might make you feel slightly off colour. These suits, they, they've been taking care of uh, functions for us for a long time now. And I've got to ask, when your suit is... Uh, extracting your waste does it ever make you feel slightly uncomfortable uh talking about it definitely <laughs> makes you feel uncomfortable really i thought like as as head science officer you might might uh, be be super into talking about the plumbings of this this super advanced suit that we wear <laughs> I do need to point out I'm not an engineer. <laughs> ah, sorry, my mistake. I thought your generalized scientific background would help. But today, <sighs> speaking of generalized scientific background, I think we need to, uh, to to move on with our science advancements here. For too long now, we have been walking on the floor and dragging things around with brute force. I mean, like conveyor belts, even perpetual motion conveyor belts as awesome of these truly have a limit and i think we need to move on beyond that uh, i'm not sure if you agree with me here well drone technology is the one thing that we've been working towards so i guess we can definitely start working on them I, here I, I think that's probably a good idea we can see up in the top right of our uh, suit overlay here that we've been working on various robotic bits of technology beautiful save of the map there um so oh no that's not the button i want uh, i've pl been playing a lot recently <laughs> honestly um, <laughs> <laughs> My control uh, system, very, very, very sketchy. Uh, I've been play playing a lot of simulations, so obviously I've been using different control systems from the real world. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we need flying robot frame construction. Flying oh robot. Let, let's have a look. For, what, on the, on the research or on the... Uh, we do have them research. We just need to start building them in the... Oh, electric engine units. We'd need those as well. I don't think we have electric engine production. Where is the flying robot frame in our... It's an intermediate uh, part. There we in, go, right. Yeah. Steel plates, batteries, electronic circuits, and engines. It's going to be difficult. We, uh, engines we do have. Lubricant we don't. Uh, we, we actually have excessive engines. Uh, so over here on the uh, production line for the Blue Science... We've noticed that engines are ripping away in production, though the uh, the the mining rig here, a little bit, a little bit, Captain, <laughs> a little bit slow. I do know you like pipes, so I'm gonna give you the job of bringing uh, heavy oil down here. He heavy oil, okay. Uh, where whereabouts would you like it moved to? I'll grab a couple of hundred pipes. Uh, Just well, onto the can... onto the bus somewhere. Uh, well, no, 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 we we can't. Ooh, maybe we can do that. If we do uh, uh, put it in a barrel and then put it in the bus, we can definitely transport it like that without using any pipes. Okay, yeah. How do I barrel stuff up? How do I barrel up blue? Can let's have a look here. It was made uh, in a normal thing. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can do that. All right, where's the lubricant getting made? Let's go and find it. Uh, we don't have any production of lubricant uh, yet. So. Oh, we can fix this. It is literally just plug into the heavy oil or the light oil? Yes, heavy. Heavy, and uh, create from there. All right, what, to the oil production then? We don't have any heavy oil. Oh, if we cracked it all down. Well, if we oh. just turn some of this cracking off, we could then, or it maybe even turn all the cracking off, and then we could take another pipe off of here somewhere and uh, make a lubricant producing plant over this side. Oh. I do have a question. How about um, how about implementing some logic circuits into this? Uh, in I, I do you think we're ready for this, science officer? <laughs> it's a big commitment, Captain. Wow. But I think we can do it. Okay, all right. Let's try and figure out how to do it. So we need like pumps to control stuff. That that's a first thing yes. I learned. So I was thinking of basically transporting the liquid uh, heavy oil into a storage tank. Yep. And in case of storage tank being more than 90% full, activate the pump that will lead to the cracking facility. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so let's make a storage tank. Bam. So we need a pump here for the the cracking, and then I'm just gonna take a pipe off of here for lubrication. 
which I totally remember how to make. Let's uh, have a look. It's in the chemical factory, which yes. I have none of right now. I'm also in the middle of making two. I'll put a small little array down. Okay, so lubricant is literally just heavy oil. Oh, beautiful. Oh, that's that's amazing, actually. Okay, with this, uh, this glorious line set down here, we should be able to turn this all into lubricant pretty easily. Uh, and with one problem solved, I, I, I feel I could share with you another problem that is not ours, but it's a problem that we can solve. Uh, you, you guys, uh, you guys, <laughs> you, you, Mr. Guys. Science Officer, may have heard of the uh, colonization uh, effort going on to expand out there in the galaxy. But uh, as, as always, Every every new colony comes with its own particular set of problems, uh, but thankfully, yeah. almost all of history has taught us how to uh, solve some of these problems. Take, for instance, the story of Alpha Tronsepti. Okay. They they they, they had a, a marvelous world, a, a, a verdant world. Unfortunately, with the uh, the application of the industrial processes they started changing the atmosphere it's a it's a standard problem that the human race has run into many 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 times uh, so they decided to introduce some uh, robotic uh, pollinators because obviously one of the first things that die in almost any ecosystem is the pollinators and once the pollinators have gone the plants start going down and when the plants are down the herbivores are down and when the herbivores are down down goes the the carnivores so the logical choice was to invest heavily in robo pollinators. Unfortunately, the the good people of this planet were were not exactly great in programming their AI uh, and set up a, a, a very basic, rudimentary uh, image recognition process for finding flowers. Finding flowers, and unfortunately, all they did was program in dark hole. Go find the dark hole in amongst a bright circle. Because generally, that finds you plants. Unfortunately, oh. these guys... I can see you're already a step ahead of me. <laughs> you you know where the problem lies in here. Humans have various things that look <laughs> like dark holes amongst bright surfaces. Their ears, their eyes, other cavities. Um, and unfortunately, within about six months, the entire population got reduced to... Uh, to, to pollinated rubbish um all all their major areas were were perforated and filled with pollen which is not what you want for a healthy colony and so the uh the the, the glorious y prize foundation have put out a a call uh, obviously i received this transmission through my helmet asking for anyone who can come up with ideas on how to wipe out the robotic pollinators and i thought you're a man of science maybe you could come up with something Robot spiders? Uh, uh, robot, po uh, like bees and um, other flying insects that do like most of the pollinating. Bees are the only things that come into mind now. Uh, my extensive captain's training is failing me. <laughs> <laughs> but there are, there are well, many other insects that do pollinization. Po yeah, that's a new word. Uh, and pollinization. Pollinization. And uh, they, they, they almost all have been replicated through some degree or other by uh, small, not not quite nano machines. Let's call them micro machines. Uh, th things of like the centimeter scale or so. Okay. Well. Um, Unfortunately, I'll very limited programming space, as you can imagine, in a centimeter size robot. Well, uh, I don't think there is a lot of that you need. You why don't you just use off off. Uh, Offside processing. Ah, uh, because uh, these guys, uh, unfortunately, they wanted to have autonomous units. They, 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 they spoke of the need to have things uh, working without intervention. I believe was their was their phrasing, hmm. uh, uh, which obviously leads to a few problems. So really, they're looking for someone to be able to uh, design some sort of autonomous system that can go around and collect these that aren't going to fall into the same problems that you would have actually from 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 this system the first time <laughs> what's missing uh, in here oh they need barrels uh, how do we make barrels i am making them uh off site <laughs> uh, down down here uh, they're being produced Ah, oh, beautiful so obviously my first idea was maybe we could have uh, thousands of inserters across the planet all set to For catch what? all set to catch catch the bees Oh, uh, I mean, there, there's well, a there's a million million future credits on the line here. Well, uh, well, but the the thing is, uh, 
if we look at nature, then predatorial basically behavior is the one thing that comes to mind at first is if something is going rampant, you should probably introduce the predator of that creature to Oh uh, man. Do we want robot dragonflies loose in the world? I mean, they, they, they sound like there could be some problems there. Did you know that dragonflies <laughs> are one of the few creatures that has like a 98% hunt... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, probability of su success? Uh, mo most creatures, are, you're looking at about a third. They'll, they'll catch a third of the prey that they go and catch. But dragonflies, uh, whoa! <laughs> Sorry, small tangent there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I am uh, looking for red inserters. I've walked right past them, no doubt. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is the lubricant line, okay. Uh, we do need a return line as well. But I'm thinking we can probably use the blue science line for the return. Yeah, yeah, we can filter stuff off of here easily. Well, this is the line that will bring the empty barrels back to the top. Okay. I'm gonna bring these empty barrels over. Yeah, okay. Okay, we're about to get a lot of lubricant coming down the line. Okay, so we've got lubricant being put into barrels and we're going down the line. I was also thinking maybe mini black holes could catch our pollinators. Uh, that could also capture the oxygen. It could, it could, but it's uh, it's definitely a thought. I mean, at, with our, with our uh, technology of lasers, uh, which is definitely something I know that we have... Uh, we, we have proficiency with in this world because we we uh, we researched it fairly early on. Look at that optics. Look how look how early that was. Honestly, if we are dealing with a swarm of uh, small in robotic insects, strategic detonation of nuclear devices in the atmosphere would be probably the best way to deal with them because of the EMP strikes that will be generated and by their internal circuits. Mm, I like that. How do we make sure that the, the radioactive fallout is kept to a minimum? Maybe some make, some sort make of... Make the nuke really clean. Really <laughs> clean. Which means it needs to be big so it burns cleanly. Burns burns the whole lot. That's the problem with uh, small-scale tacti tactical nukes. Uh, they don't they don't burn completely. You get a, get a lot of radioactive material just getting vaporised rather no, than... isn't it? Well... The, well, I'm just now going for to, today's strategic nukes. Are they actually cleaner than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki nukes? Oh, that's because they were like super old. <laughs> now, now, yeah, but <laughs> nowadays, what uh, like the technology being e equal, um, the pressures are higher in the bigger ones, so that all the fuel can. I don't want to use the word combust, confuse, uh, fission. So can fission more, more completely. Well, I guess. Um, okay. Okay. Now. So we got the lubricant at the end of the bus. Woo. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, nice. this is working. Yep. We 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 can put stuff in and take stuff out. Woo. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I the guess. next bit is to get engines and circuits down here. Engines uh, and. Engines are right here. Yes. Yeah. So then we go engines this way and we should carry on having engines through the bottom and we should also get the mining rigs coming. Okay, cool. Yeah, there we go. It's good. It works. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> it's alright. I had a plan. I had a vision. I made it happen. It's, uh, it's what they teach you in captain's training. Alright, I finally have the output of uh, what we're after. <laughs> Oh, I do. <laughs> I have some reports back from uh, from from high command. Uh, yes. they, they have said that our smelteries are woefully inadequate. <laughs> and, and and whilst I don't want to agree with this particular comment, I, I do kind of find myself forced to. <laughs> well, so our smeltery system is inadequate, but we still keep on running out of iron. I think they're wrong. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just the fact that we keep on running out of iron. No, I think our mining setup is currently inadequate. <laughs> and that the smeltery system is completely adequate for the current iron well, production. Okay. Iron ore production. So we need to increase the iron ore production somehow. Yes. By make, adding more trains at least to the transport. Yeah, we will definitely have to rethink this input system then. <laughs> Okay, here we go, just about to produce. Bam, yeah, okay, it works. Oh, that's that's actually really good, actually. Um, we'll just 
just have these over here for now. I'm not sure what we're going to do with them, but we'll, uh, we'll figure something out. Okay, so I reckon we're going to do the same over this way, and that's where batteries are going to be, right? Oh, well, batteries need acid, and we are producing batteries. Are we producing batteries? Can we can we just ship them in from somewhere? Uh, they are on the opposite side, where uh, we are producing accumulators. All the way up at the oil. We should. I, how do we add tags to the map? If we do use drones to carry the sulfuric acid yeah. across the map to here, where we are, yeah. would would the basically at first there's gonna be one drone yeah. that carries it over, and then we're gonna have more drones. So what's the growth gonna be? Well, if we keep adding the... Well, it's it's actually all about the number of machines, right? But in theory, I see what you're getting at. That is going to end up being exponential growth where one drone carries for two drones and then those two drones carry for four, etc., etc. Et yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would be exponential growth. But unfortunately, limiting factors will apply here, su such as the number of machines. You can almost see that, like, resources for population control. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's, so there's, some, there's some deep level... Deep level uh, modeling going on here, you can tell. Steel plates, two batteries, electronic circuits, and electric engines for one flying uh, robot frame. Oh my. Where's all the steel gone? Where'd the steel go? <laughs> we have no steel production because we're making all of the barrels with it. Oh. <laughs> oh, that that's mildly inconvenient. <laughs> mildly inconvenient. Captain, do you want to start taking care of the second train to carry the iron? Maybe, maybe it's. Oh man, that's. So I can put the train down to carry the iron, but this this input, we're just gonna ha end up having two trains try and smash into the same place. Well, we do have. We can. Ma I can make a basically waiting area for it. Of course. Let's have a look at our steel production. What is actually the holdup? No, that's not uh, steel. Not enough iron. It's right here. It's going as fast as possible. So the steel smeltery setup definitely needs expect. Man, this this needs to hurry up right here. <laughs> <laughs> if these things could get out my way, we could then just like mirror it out, and that would be a good start. Not necessarily a fix, but a, a good start, and then maybe like copy those two out. Uh, I do need to check something. Okay. I think we can just. Can we just do that? What is? Digging it by hand is not gonna work. <laughs> Gotta get it out the way. Gotta get it out the way. <laughs> it's in one of those squares. There is one thousand two hundred and twenty-three iron ingot ore. It's alright. I'll, I'll do it. We'll, we'll be done at some point. I'll do these two. Look, you do another two. <laughs> Here's the plan. Oh, we're gonna on me. stress test our electric power grid. Okay. We're gonna replace these furnaces with electric furnaces. Ah, oh, I'm down for it. I am down for it. In order to do that, we need to research the electric furnaces. But Captain, we don't have power production enough for that. So... Do we not? Definitely not. Definitely not. Okay, so what do we need to do to get this production being much higher than the 22 megawatts that we have right now? Let's repeat the entire setup of the solar panels field. Okay, that sounds awesome. Would you be interested in helping me basically place everything? I, th I think I could yeah. just about do that. Oh, so we need to get all of this locked back down. So where's the accumulators? We made these up here. We're literally just looking at the oh, hello. Oh, ooh. yeah, I'm just. Oh, oh, I got a whole load of yellow alerts. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> don't, okay. Don't come and attack us now. <laughs> oh, that would just be one one thing too many for this poor captain's heart, I think. <laughs> okay, I got 333 accumulators. Hopefully that's enough. Oh yeah, our power production is just everything is either everything is slow or the I'm just not used to the yellow uh Inserters being so slow. It could be the yellow inserters not being. Uh, you're not used to the yellow inserters because yellow inserters are super slow. So pl the plan for me, Captain, is that we're gonna have enough power. Yeah. When we be, when we are able to basically cut off the uh, steam turbines completely, that they are not working during the day. Okay. Yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that. 
I mean, uh, there is no need for them to be working during the day. This power here is more than enough, surely. Currently, it's uh -huh, not. Currently. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, it's an engineer because uh, the flow of electricity yeah. is a current. <laughs> currently, yeah. Joke, no. <laughs> yeah. There we, there we go, people. The jokes you come for. <laughs> Only the high quality ones. Highest quality puns. <laughs> I feel like a 3D printer. <laughs> well, that's why we're working on the robots as well as the extra power. <laughs> this tangent brought to you by power shortages. <laughs> and I have no solar panels anymore. Uh, we are actually trying to prevent a power shortage by adding more. Yeah. We're completely self-sufficient on solar. We are We are actually completely self-sufficient on solar. That is awesome. So a couple of more solar panels, and I think we're basically done with them. Yeah, 36 more solar panels. 36? Oh yeah, cool. The little flashing warning in the corner. I have eight. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to st stand here and give these give these machines little motivational pep talks. I mean, remember <laughs> when you guys were just nuts and bolts? You thought you would be nothing than a pile of scrap, but no, you came together and were more than the constituents of your own parts. You are a machine. You are a maker of stuff, an assembly machine. Create the power, my friends. Create and help us towards the new future. I don't, I don't think they've made enough. Uh, <laughs> I've got, no. I've got one. This one hasn't even made any. Gah. They, they really told me that would work in captain school. <laughs> Why isn't this one doing anything? Because green science... Oh, uh, green finger circuits are not really being produced. And... Oh god, they're so slow. Everything is so slow compared to red. <laughs> well, we can we can go through and replace them, but... That, that's it. So what's the hold up here? Copper? Copper. Really now? Copper Co is the oh, oh, gosh. Let's go and have a look. Well, they... Oh. What? <laughs> okay, the copper flow is a little limited. Oh, okay. I see. I see. That's, that's fine. We can kind of deal with this. So, actually, the next thing we need to deal with is a copper train, not an iron train. Iron can kind of keep up. <laughs> copper is not. Good work. Good. Man, that is noisy. <laughs> yeah. And now all of the power that we are producing is just being eaten by... Nah... Steve is still producing enough power to power all of this. Oh man, and... So does that mean that our accumulators are still full? Yeah. 1.5 gigajoules. <laughs> gigajoules! Well, it, it is how much power we have stored. Oh yeah, 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 of course. It's just... It, you, you just can't say the word gigajoule normally. So I also <laughs> note that we're not quite getting a full belt's worth out of all this. That's that's quite sad. I like this uh, this slowly upward ramp of the the production of morning. That's yeah, <laughs> it's nice. It's slow power up, I guess. Well, you have dawn comes in, dusts off the sheets. Who's a good girl? Make make sure everything works well. <laughs> sheets. I bet I meant the silicon panel. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Suck. I mean, if Dawn wants to come in and uh, tidy my sheets up for me, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> I always just throw them in the corner. <laughs> uh, we do still need the solar panels. We do still need the solar panels. Let's go see if my motivational talk has uh, motivated. The I, I can't find them that way. I'm looking, looking in the wrong direction. Ooh, nice. Electric furnaces. The one thing that we were trying to make from the beginning. Yay, electric furnaces. Oh man. Okay, so we we really need to think about the layout here because if I remember correctly, electric furnaces take up a little bit more room than normal ones. They're free by free, I think. Yeah. And we need stone bricks for them. Thankfully, I have a stone stone brick production line on the go. Yes. So with that, science officer, we've, we've been walking around, we've been doing some things all day. Uh, unfortunately, the lack of, well, lack of resources meant we had to call a small stoppage to the drone production as we try and sort out things like our smeltering system, power, things like that. Things that we have slowly come to realise are not quite as uh, tippity-top <laughs> as we would like, like them to be. So uh, next time... I think we will be dealing with the furnaces uh, and, and any other systems that we can kind of shimmy along into a nicer system. But until then, Captain's Log, signing off. <laughs> <laughs>